Hello everyone, especially to all grade 7 learners out there. Welcome to DepEd TV. We ensure you to a day full of learnings and discoveries. I am Mom Con, your science teacher. Come and join me, we are Sci Connected. For today's lesson, here are our learning goals. Number one, identify the symbol, group number, and period of elements. Number two, create an artwork showing the element's name and symbol and describe its importance. And number three, appreciate that elements and compounds are substances that can be found anywhere. Today is another chance to learn and discover the wonders of science. Before we start, make sure you have your pen, paper, and self-learning module. Let me give you a short science fact. Whew, it's so hot! Did you know that in 2.3 billion years, it is possible to be too hot for life to exist on Earth? Our planet may become a vast desert similar to Mars, as predicted by many scientists. That's why we have to conserve resources as it may help save the planet Earth. Examples are waste segregation and recycling. In doing this, you lose nothing and you benefit from it. Well, that's the short science fact with MomCon. Now, let's have a recap. This time, you will be engaged and have an immersion on proper waste disposal. Prepare your pen and your paper. So, let's start! Inside the garbage bin, our words need to be thrown at the dump site. As a good student of our nation, you need to save the words that describe or related to elements and compounds. Segregate them by writing it in the boxes. Let's check your answers! Very good! The words related to elements are one atom, oxygen, and hydrogen. What about the words related to compound? Excellent! The words related to compound are two or more atoms and water. I congratulate you! You have proved that you are a great student of our nation. Remember, elements are made up of atom or atoms of the same kind. Each element is made entirely from one type of atom. It may be a metal, non-metal, and metalloid. Examples of metals are copper, lead, and nickel, while fluorine, sulfur, and helium are examples of non-metals. Arsenic, antimony, and tellurium are listed as metalloids. Compounds are combinations of two or more elements. Compounds can be broken down into its components through chemical process. Example, baking soda. Another is, Hydrogen peroxide. Actively, there's a tool that can help you identify the different elements. And this will be our lesson for today's episode. In this lesson, your goal is to Number 1. Identify the symbol and group number of elements. Number 2. 
create an artwork showing the element's name and symbol and describe its importance. Number three, appreciate that elements and compounds are substances that can be found anywhere. Have you seen something like this? It is called Periodic Table of Elements. The periodic table is devised by Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist. It is where all the 118 elements are arranged according to its group and period. Group is the table's 18 columns from top to bottom. Period is the 7 rows of the periodic table. Elements are arranged from left to right and top to bottom in order of increasing atomic number. You can also see the symbols of those elements in the periodic table. Example, for the element hydrogen, the symbol is capital H. This periodic table will help you be familiar with the elements. Now, let's try to use the periodic table. Are you ready? Let's try it out! What are the symbols of the following elements? Lithium Chlorine Argon Calcium Manganese Boron Nitrogen Fluorine, Phosphorus, and Iodine. I will give you 5 minutes to look for its symbols. Are you already done answering? Let's see if your answers are correct. These are the symbols of those elements. The symbol for lithium is Li. For chlorine, Cl. Argon, Ar. For calcium, Ca. The symbol for manganese is Mn. For boron, B. Nitrogen, N. Fluorine, F. Phosphorus, P. And for iodine, the symbol is I. It's easy, right? This time, let's try to identify the group number of these elements. Groups are the periodic table's 18 columns. Example, hydrogen, and its group number is 1. Are you ready? Let's go and find it!
Did you find it? Let's see if your answers are right. Lithium belongs to group number one. Chlorine belongs to group number 17. For argon, it belongs to group 18. Calcium is group number 2. Manganese is group number 7. Boron belongs to group number 13. Nitrogen is group number 15. Fluorine belongs to group number 17. Phosphorus belongs to group number 15. And iodine belongs to group number 17. See? You're just like playing a board game. This time, I challenge you to look for the period of those elements. Example is hydrogen. And it belongs to period number 1. Well, are you ready? Your timer starts now. Have you found it? Let's check your answers. Lithium belongs to period number 2. Chlorine belongs to period number 3. Argon is in period number 3. Calcium is in period number 4. Manganese belongs to period number 4. Boron is in period number 2. Nitrogen is in period number 2. Fluorine belongs to period number 2. Phosphorus belongs to period number 3. And iodine is in period number 5. Did you find it hard? Well, I am telling you that you did a great job! Congratulations! Hope that you have enjoyed the activity. Elements and compounds are essential. What makes it essential? There are elements that are required for life and absence of this may result to death. We all use this in our daily life. In the food that we eat, the water that we drink, and the air that we breathe. To show how important an element is, let's make a sci-art. 
choose an element from periodic table and make a flashcard showing its name, symbol, and later describe how important is that element of your choice. You may use any art materials like bond paper, colored paper, coloring materials, marker, scissors, and glue. So, who's up for this? Hop on! To see how you understand the lesson, let's have an assessment. Prepare your pen and your paper. Read the questions carefully. Write the letter of the correct answer in your paper. Number 1. Which of the following statements is true? A. Ferrous sulfate cannot be broken down into simpler substances. B. Compounds are made up of one kind of element. C. Water is composed of more than two elements. D. Compounds are more complex than elements. Number 2. What elements made up the compound potassium nitrate? A. Potassium and oxide B. Potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen C. Potassium and oxygen D. Potassium and potassium Number 3. It is a tabular display of the 118 elements arranged according to groups and periods. A. Periodic table B. Scientific method C. Scientific calculator D. Laboratory equipment Number 4 Which of the following is correctly matched elements? A. Carbon and oxygen for carbon dioxide B. Oxygen and hydrogen for hydrogen peroxide C. Sodium and potassium for sodium chloride D. Potassium and sulfur for potassium nitrate Number 5 what is the part of the periodic table that shows the 18 columns arranged from top to bottom? A. Group B. Period C. Element D. Compound Let's check your answers! Number 1 I hope that you got it right! Because the correct answer is letter D. Compounds are more complex than elements. Number 2. The elements that made up potassium nitrate are potassium nitrogen and oxygen, which is letter B. Number 3. The tool where the elements are arranged is called the periodic table. Correct answer is letter A. Number 4. 
You got it right! The answer is letter A. Carbon and oxygen for carbon dioxide. The part of the periodic table that shows the 18 columns from top to bottom is the group. Right answer is letter A. Now, it's time to be connected on one of our question centers in Sci Connected on DepEd TV page. Our question sender for today is Matt, 11 years old, from Punturin Elementary School, Schools Division of Valenzuela City. His question is, what is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture? Actually, we will be talking about it soon on the next episodes. Well, what is a mixture? In science, mixtures are made up of two or more substances that are not chemically combined and can be separated. Examples, seawater, dishwashing liquid, noodles, and ice in water. Now, what is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture? A homogeneous mixture have same phase and composition. Example is air, while heterogeneous mixture is not uniform throughout the composition. Example is mixture of sand and water. Thank you so much for your question, Matt. Hope that everyone gained additional information from it. If you have questions, Simply post it on Sci Connected on DepEd TV page. Kindly follow this format. Remember, elements and compounds are substances that surround us and can be found anywhere. Periodic table will help you identify the symbol, group, period, atomic number, atomic mass, and uses of each elements. Hope that you have learned new lesson and had fun today. It doesn't stop here because we will be using these learnings on the next episode. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And again, this is Mom Con scientifically saying, think critically, do things differently, and that develops your ability.